Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is August 9, 2020. I have a quick one for you right here. This is uh, Joseph Stalin's speech of the 19th Party Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union from 14 October 1952. This was taken from the Marxists Internet Archive at Marxists.org. Thanks to them for existing and for hosting all of the wonderful material that they have there. The source for this particular work is Works of Stalin, Volume 16, Publisher, Red Star Press Limited, London, 1986. Transcription into HTML was done by Salil Sen for MIA, 2009. And it's in the public domain, free to copy, distribute, display, and perform as well. Thanks again to Marxist Internet Archive. Now the audiobook. Comrades, permit me, in the name of our party congress, to express our thanks to all fraternal parties and organizations whose representatives have honored our party congress by their presence, or who have sent our party congress greetings of friendship, for their wishes for our further success and for their confidence. Followed by stormy, prolonged applause that became an ovation. For us, this trust is especially valuable as it signifies their readiness to support our party in its struggle for a better future for the people, in its struggle against war, in its struggle to keep peace. Followed by stormy, prolonged applause. It would be a mistake to believe that our party, which has become a mighty power, does not need more support. That would be wrong. Our party and our country need the continuous trust, sympathy, and support of fraternal peoples outside our borders and will always need it. The special quality of this support lies in that every support of the peace endeavors of our party by each fraternal party simultaneously signifies the support of their own people in their struggle to keep peace. As the English workers in the years 1918 to 1919, during the armed attack of the English bourgeoisie on the Soviet Union, organized their struggle against the war under the slogan, Hands Off Russia, was a support. It was above all a support of the struggle of their own people for peace, and then also a support of the Soviet Union. If Comrade Thores or Comrade Togliati declare that their people do not want to be led into a war against the people of the Soviet Union, stormy applause, then that is a support, above all a support for the French and Italian workers and peasants who struggle for peace, and then also a support of the peace endeavors of the Soviet Union. The special quality of the present support is thus explained, that the interests of our party are not only against the interests of the peace-loving people, but on the contrary, blend with them. Stormy applause. Where the Soviet Union is concerned, its interest in the matter of world peace cannot be separated from the cause of peace in the whole world. It is understood that our party must do its duty by its fraternal parties and support them and their peoples in the struggle for liberation and in their struggle for keeping peace. This is what the party does. Stormy applause. After the seizure of power by our party in 1917 and after our party took real measures to eliminate the yoke of capitalists and landlords, the representatives of the fraternal parties, inspired by our daring and the success of our party, gave it the name Shock Brigade of the Revolutionary Movement and the Workers' Movement of the World. Thereby they expressed the hope that the success of the Shock Brigade would alleviate the sufferings of the people in the situation of being under the capitalist yoke. I think that our party has fulfilled these hopes, especially in the time of the Second World War, as the Soviet Union smashed the German and Japanese fascist tyranny and liberated the European and Asian peoples from the danger of fascist slavery. Stormy applause. Of course, it was very difficult to fulfill this honorable task as long as there was only one shock brigade, as long as it stood alone, the avant-garde in the fulfillment of this task. But that is in the past. Now it is completely different. Now, from China and Korea to Czechoslovakia and Hungary, new shock brigades have appeared on the map in the form of people's democracies. Now the struggle has been eased for our party, and also the work proceeds better. Stormy, prolonged applause. Special attention must be paid to the communist, democratic, or worker and peasant parties that are not yet in power and which must carry out their work under the yoke of strict bourgeois rule. Of course, their work is more difficult. But their work is not so difficult as it was for us Russian communists in the time of the Tsar, as the smallest step forward was declared a serious crime. The Russian communists nevertheless held firm, did not retreat from difficulties, and came to victory. The same will be the case with these parties. 
Why is it that these parties do not have such difficult work as the Russian communists had in the times of Tsarism? Because first of all, they have the example of the struggle and success, as in the Soviet Union and in the people's democratic countries before them. Consequently, they can learn from the mistakes and successes of these countries and thus ease their work. Because secondly, the bourgeoisie itself, the arch enemy of the freedom movement, has become different, has essentially changed, has become more reactionary, has lost the cooperation of the people, and thus has been weakened. It is understood that these circumstances must likewise ease the work of the revolutionary and democratic parties. Stormy applause. Earlier, the bourgeoisie presented themselves as liberal. They were for bourgeois democratic freedom, and in that way gained popularity with the people. Now there is not one remaining trace of liberalism. There is no such thing as freedom of personality anymore. Personal rights are now only acknowledged by them, the owners of capital. All, of, all the other citizens are regarded as raw materials that are only for exploitation. The principle of equal rights for people and nations is trodden in the dust, and it is replaced by the principle of full rights for the exploiting minority and the lack of rights of the exploited majority of the citizens. The banner of bourgeois democratic freedom has been flung overboard. I think that you, the representatives of communist and democratic parties, must pick up this banner and carry it forward if you want to gain the majority of the people. There is nobody else to raise it. Stormy applause. Earlier, the bourgeoisie, as the heads of nations, were for the rights and independence of nations and put that above all. Now there is no trace left of this national principle. Now the bourgeoisie sell the rights and independence of their nation for dollars. The banner of national independence and national sovereignty has been thrown overboard. Without doubt, you, the representatives of the communist and democratic parties, must raise this banner and carry it forward if you want to be the patriots of your countries, if you want to be the leading powers of the nations. There is nobody else to raise it. Stormy applause. That is how matters stand at present. It is understood that all these circumstances must ease the work of the communist and democratic parties that are not yet in power. Consequently, there is every ground for the success and victory of the fraternal parties in the lands of capitalist rule. Stormy applause. Long live our fraternal parties. Prolonged applause. Long life and health to the leaders of the fraternal parties. Prolonged applause. Long live the peace between the peoples. Prolonged applause. Down with the arsonists of war. Everyone stood up. Stormy, prolonged applause that became an ovation. There were shouts of long live Comrade Stalin. Long live the great leader of the working people of the world, Comrade Stalin. The great Stalin, long live peace between the peoples. And again, this was the speech of the uh, 19th Party Congress of the Soviet Union, Dietz Press, uh, Berlin, 1952, pages 5 to 15. End of audiobook. So there you have a uh, brief speech by Stalin in 1952. So this is um, 68 years ago and a speech that foreshadows the appearance of neoliberalism. Um, I'm not sure exactly what Stalin was referring to. He didn't give any um, specific examples. So I just don't know exactly um, what he was referring to as far as the bourgeoisie throwing aside personal freedoms, perhaps just generally the ascendancy of fascist and highly reactionary regimes such as Germany and Italy, so forth. Um, but the point that he makes here about... Um, because the bourgeoisie has discarded this idea of like personal freedoms and et cetera, it's time for communists to pick that up. I think that that's good advice still now, decades later, because, you know, we live in a post 9-11 war on terror environment where every kind of liberty has been, uh, you know, cracked down or sort of personal freedom, um, civil right, et cetera, has been um, cracked down on. Privacy is virtually non-existent now particularly in the United States, and um, could be a good talking point for socialists and communists today to say, you know, we want an environment where not just economically you have more uh, opportunities to develop yourself and live decently and like live more to your full potential, but also politically, you know, through communism beyond the paranoid world of the bourgeois trying to cling to their personal fortunes, um, we would be able to establish a world that was freer more open and um, more relaxed and peaceful. And on that note, I'm going to call it there. This has been Socialism for All. You can find us facebook.com slash socialism for all. Of course, youtube.com slash c 
slash socialism for all. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. All of that helps to boost this video, get more engagement, and help more people to see this channel. You can also find us at patreon.com slash socialism for all. And thanks to our current patrons whose names are on the screen. You can support this channel for as little as a dollar a month or as much as a hundred dollars a month. And for any amount in between, we've got five, ten, and twenty dollar and fifty dollar denominations. All of that support is helpful for me to spend the time that it takes to do this channel and, you know, pitch in for books and things like that. Once again, thanks. This has been Socialism for All, and we'll see you next time.